three weeks ago, I actually spoke to the Foreign Secretary, William Hake, about your business in Tibet at the Foreign Office, where I had a chance to speak to him. And um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the UK is the first country in the world who has actually a human rights business and action plan, which is very admirable and very impressive. And, um, and I, you know, I saw your nice presentation about the academy. And as you said, I, I'm, I'm one of the people who actually, um, that you've, uh, George Turner and some of your colleagues have met up with. But you, know, you haven't really answered our questions about the human rights situation. You said that you would have human rights, uh, you know, a scheme or standards. But you must be aware that Tibet and China is a very different region from the USA, from the UK. And I think in 2014, having human rights standards does mean having the human rights standards of your own country with the same rights, not the ones of a, you know, not, not the ones of an imperial sort of old faded colonial time. So I really want to know not about your training, about throwing some pennies at some underprivileged Tibetans, which but I want to know, especially from Richard Solomon, what is your human rights standard practice? How have you evaluated the situation in Tibet when, you know, there are experts around the world who have worked in the field say that there are no human rights? So you haven't given an answer what has been your consultation. There are many groups around the world who do this consultation and you haven't given a clear answer how you have done it. You just said that you would. But because of our experience, our knowledge, expertise, there is no way to us that you have these standards if you haven't consulted any of those groups. And if you keep doing business with the Chinese government, and Tibetans are burning themselves on fire also in Lhasa, where you're building your hotel, you're dragging all these people into this business, all these shareholders. And that's my question. And I would just respectfully like to show you a picture no. of one of... I'm done, of one of the Tibetans who have set themselves on fire in Tibet in 2012 because they have no human rights. This is not for me to provoke, this is reality. So I really want to get a very clear answer. Richard Solomon, thank you. Uh, and the first point I would like to make is that uh, we are very mindful of the challenge of a complex situation. Where we go? social in, uh, in Tibet. Uh, I will answer your question, but I will not take any more questions thereafter. I asked Tibet, Richard Solomon. To, uh, Richard Solomon. To, uh, I, I'm the chairman of the meeting, and okay. staff will uh, take the question and answer the question, if I may uh, politely uh, just uh, in indicate. Um, the, the fundamental difference between your perspective and my perspective <coughs> is that you wonder why we are here, and you would want us to go away from Tibet. We want to be here, and we want to be a source of good. I appreciate what you said about throwing some pennies uh, at some underprivileged Tibetan. Uh, I'm not sure they would have the same perspective uh, on, on that, what we are doing. And you heard some of the other people uh, about Academy, how uh, which was pride uh, they talk about changing their life. Mm -hmm. Last year I said we would have academy, we've not opened this hotel, just to be clear, we've not opened the hotel, but we said we'd start liaising with the local community, which we've done. We've opened two programs, there will be 120 people, the majority will be Tibetan. Uh, we have uh, given uh, uh, grants to young Tibetans. Um, and we continue to do that, and we'll open further uh, a program. We know that for each dollar we spend uh, in our hotel, six to seven dollars of value creation are there for the social community. We operate in 100 countries. You've seen our history for 10 years. And just accusing us before we even open this hotel to be complicit in, uh, in human rights violation, I think it's not, it's not right. Um, we have no track record of uh, uh, not respecting human rights. It is in our DNA. We believe that doing well and doing good are the two sides of the same coin. That is who we are. And we're not going to change our standards for uh, uh, Tibet. Now, we ask a question. You say, 
why would you uh, give information on uh, guests coming to in your hotel to the governor? That's the law in China. That and that's not for the Tibetans. That's not everybody. It's else. different for Tibetans and Chinese. It is. All guests have to be registered in China. Uh, you ask us whether or not our rules will be occupied uh, by uh, dignitaries, Chinese dignitaries, who are going to discuss uh, about Tibetan affairs and increase what you call oppression. It's a question I cannot answer. You ask us uh, uh, whether or not uh, meetings will be held and which measure have we taken to prevent. That's not a reasonable base for, for discussion and, and dialogue. And so, we're going to continue to be dissatisfied uh, with, with our answer because we, we, we don't talk about the same thing. What I'm willing to, to again confirm to you, as I did last year, we're willing to sit down with you, as we did, to discuss how we're operating in this hotel, what we are doing to create value, to create impact in our activity. Uh, and, and then you judge us on what we're doing. But that's not the way we're discussing currently. And, I, and I'm afraid we continue to answer your letter, you continue to be dissatisfied because we cannot satisfy your, your, your ultimate uh, uh, point, which is go away or you shouldn't be here. No, that's not we, the ultimate. We see it, no. we see it very differently. So, with that, um, I'm afraid, and I know I'm not satisfied with you again. Uh, I'm afraid I will not take more, more, more questions about uh, the, the free Tibet. And it's not that lack of respect, believe me. Uh, it's because it, it's very difficult to come to any form of agreement. I'll try to be as genuine, as transparent as possible. Thank you.